Hello everyone, it's Yuki here and welcome back to episode 13 of my Let's Play Survival series. First of all, I want to thank everyone for the huge, huge, huge support on the last two videos. Both the movie video that I made that contains all 10 first episodes and also on my latest episode with the mountain. Speaking about the mountain, I actually got a few comments and one of them suggested to use some mossy cobblestone to make it a bit more varied. And I think it was a really, really good idea. I think I just executed it really bad here. Some of the parts I like, I feel like it works more when it's added in corners where like the moss kind of blends in with the mossy cobble. And I also added some of the stone bricks, the mossy stone bricks. The idea is that it's fairly, fairly slow at the moment for me to get all this because I don't have a moss farm and to make the mossy bricks and the mossy cobblestone actually takes moss or i could go with vines but i think moss it's easier and basically what i do here is i pretty much place down the cobblestone i place down a piece of moss and then i break it i do have a hole so it's a bit faster for breaking it but that's pretty much my process to do it so to do a couple of stacks actually takes a while so I only did, you know, small bits on this mountain. So I think I'm going to make that as a, you know, next few episodes project. The mountain is rather large, so I'm not really expecting to finish this in this episode because I have completely different plans. Depending on how much time I'm going to have, basically today when I'm recording this part is Tuesday. And I pretty much have until Saturday when this episode releases to finish both recording, editing and building and all that. So I have a few plans, so I'll see how many I actually manage to get done by the end of this episode, basically probably until Friday. And then if I don't manage to finish everything that I have planned, we're just going to continue on the next episode. The plans that I have in mind, and I think one of the most important ones is to build a melanin pumpkin farm. That's pretty much the top of my list just to be able to get much more emeralds. And to be able to get those emeralds, I'm gonna need a lot of farmer villagers. And I don't want to just like get a bunch of them in the village that we have there. So I'm gonna try to make a community farmers build. So to kind of give you a spoiler of what I plan ahead, I want to make all villager types will have their own kind of community houses. So I'm going to have whatever 20 something villagers, I think there are, or maybe a bit less actually. And I'm going to have them have like small community homes. So for example, uh, let's fly over to the path actually, because I think it's going to be a bit easier to kind of make a point out of this. So for example, we have this path over here. And on the side of this path, pretty much like this village is, I'm going to make a small build community where it's going to be like two, three houses with like a centerpiece maybe or something like that, where all the farmer villages are going to be living in. They're going to be enclosed by a nice fence. So I'm not going to make just this, you know, ugly fence that we have here. I'm going to actually design a fence all around it. And then I'm going to try to expand this path pretty much down this area over here. I don't want to go too much into the snowy area. It's going to look pretty bad. But pretty much expand it all the way here and then build the small communities on each side of that road. So it's kind of like, you know, like an extended village, let's call it that way. So that's plan number two. Then... I want to try to attempt to get at least one piece of netherite. I think that's going to be a lot. First of all, I need to find a template in a bastion. So that's going to be interesting to find uh, the brutes. And then actually finding the template once I found the bastion. So that remains to be seen how that's going to turn out. Then I want to connect the mountain to probably the main area so i'm gonna have to build a small bridge over this river that i made here probably now that i'm looking at this river i'm gonna have to 
kind of designed this a bit better this moss and grass looks really bad underneath the water so i'm probably gonna have to use some stone maybe get some uh, seagrass and make it look a bit better then build a tiny bridge over this so we can actually walk it and then probably somewhere over here where the wheat farm is i'm gonna have to do another small bridge that connects this mountain to the starter house so like i said in the first few episodes i want to keep everything connected so it's not gonna have to be a big bridge actually it's gonna be something similar to that i would assume but yeah that's that's kind of the plan for this episode so like i said the the mossy cobblestone and all that i'm gonna have to do across the few episodes since it's a rather big project considering i don't have the moss farm yet and I want to focus on getting that uh, pumpkin and melon farm and getting the villagers village built. Let's call it that way. And then all the other plans, we'll see if I have time by the end of this episode. I hope that ramble didn't really bore you and I kind of made myself clear of what I want to make in this episode. So in order to actually build that small village, I'm going to need a lot of resources. I kind of designed something in uh, creative of exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to have to gather a lot of wood, a lot of deep slate, I think probably some stone for some stone bricks. So first things first, like I said, I'm going to build a pumpkin and melon farm. I cut down a 15 by 15 square here with uh, out of the carpet. This is where the rails are going to go. Then the grass is going to go on top or rather the dirt. And then I'm going to plant everything, observers, pistons, and then some redstone on top. So I'm going to show you the whole build at the end. I don't really see a need for a time lapse for this build. So I'm just going to see you at the end of it. Before I go ahead and actually build the whole farm, I just wanted to show you this. So this is how I laid down the track. Basically a row of redstone blocks, powered rails, one block here to return the minecart. And then here I just made the simple unloader. Uh, let me stop this minecart just so I can show you, for example. So if I put this here, drop a few blocks in there, push this. The second it gets up, stops, it will unload. And then once it's empty, it will push it right back. So basically, this is non-stop going to collect all the pumpkins and melons that are going to be farmed. In case you want to look at it, it's basically... A hopper, a comparator, reading that hopper, going into a torch in a block and then a repeater that basically will unpower this whenever the minecart has any items inside. So this is pretty much how it looks like. Alright, so the farm is fully complete now. Actually, I'm lying. There's a few minor details that I need to add. But the farm is fully operational basically. As soon as the pumpkins or melons would grow... Uh, they will get broken off by the pistons, see like that one just fired there now. And they would get collected, so... You might notice that this line is actually out one block. And this is because whenever the minecart turns, it's not gonna pick up the items above it. So if it's in a straight line, it definitely will. If it goes in a turn, it's not always going to pick them up. So I basically extended this one block out. So what I'm going to have to do is put some glass, actually any block would work, just down here basically. So let me place it like this. So I'm going to need a line of glass or any type of block here. And this is purely so the items don't actually pop out of the farm and the minecart will be able to pick them up on top of that uh, dirt. And uh, yeah, like you see there... The minecarts are firing pretty much constantly now because all those seeds are growing and whenever they're gonna grow like at max they're gonna spawn the pumpkins and the melons and then I'm finally gonna get them automated. It's a bit of a downside the fact that you're gonna have well that I'm gonna have to craft all the melons but I guess further down the line, once the crafter is going to get added, I can automate that as well and it's going to be even faster. In case you're wondering how I added everything, 
basically the observers are facing down into the seed or the stem you should call it and then all the pistons are facing down towards the empty dirt block so whenever this one triggers that basically triggers the growth stage it's gonna signal the observer then on top of every observer there's like a redstone dust and that's gonna trigger all the pistons around this observer and then the pumpkin is gonna break all right so i managed to build the farm like you saw earlier on and i was actually gathering resources for the build for the villagers and while i was doing that the farm really produces i actually traded already i think it was about four or five stacks total and i got like two stacks of emeralds just in that time alone so these are going to be the materials that i'm going to need for the houses it's going to be three houses that I'm gonna be building. I'm gonna get a time lapse for you guys to see this build. I'm really, really excited to see how it's gonna look like in the world and not just in, in the creative part. But before I actually get to building, I need to actually find a spot for where I want these builds to be. And I think I want them fairly close to this village over here. I don't want to get too far. I still want to keep them fairly close together so I don't have to walk you know miles to get to the last villagers for example so oh there's a wandering trader here let's see what do we get hello uh jungle sapling i don't think i need that or do i uh maybe i do actually let's let's get that saplings first i should have some emeralds over here i hope oh yes and there we go i got six i think that should be okay to grow a really tall jungle tree and get some saplings back from it and like i was saying i don't want to go too far away from the main village so i think i'm going to try to flatten this area slightly here maybe add some grass in there flatten this part and i think it might fit over in this particular area here i have to see if it will but uh, yeah let's uh, get to clearing and then get to building as well so let's do this in a form of a time lapse all right we are back hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse it was actually much more difficult to build these than i thought it's going to be so i might have to actually try instead of using lightmatica to build these out of a creative world to kind of try to make it without that the schematic makes it pretty hard to see where to place blocks and like i kept falling into a holes that i kept forgetting and all these kind of things so i might try to kind of do free form building potentially just kind of look at an idea and then try to build from there that would potentially give you know a bit of my own kind of vibe of the building but i really really like how the village turned out obviously it's not complete i still need to do some paths in between the buildings and i think i'm going to go with some kind of stony path I feel like I have a good bit of materials right now so it would look much much better than just using that path block like we had uh, in the other side so I can probably make this stony blocks all the way through these villages that I'm gonna start building and I think that 
this area here feels a bit empty. So I was thinking to add some sort of barn potentially where, you know, the villagers would come over, they gather all their crops and everything that uh, they need to like survive. And then they kind of store it in this barn so I can add some hay bales maybe inside, add some barrels for them to put in their items. And I can also use it as a storage as well, potentially. So yeah, I think I need to actually go gather a few more stone at our stone generator. I don't have any stone left. I kind of used everything to craft all the comparators and everything else that I needed for the melon and pumpkin farm. But I'm going to go and grab those and then I'll be right back to build this path together. All right. I really need to make a cobblestone farm because mining all that it's really really slow or at least get a beacon but this is gonna be the palette that i'm gonna be working with pretty much so i'm gonna be using cobblestone tough and some gravel and what i want to do actually i want to make an outline for the path itself which is gonna be slightly raised compared to the rest of the floor right so basically i'm gonna have the path like this and from here for example i'm gonna have the path going something around these lines over here i'm probably going to need like a small path going here where i'm gonna have this barn and then i'm gonna go again like this probably going to have to make it start from here and then something around these lines and then basically make a whole circle around all these houses right so i tried a few shapes with these uh, stone slabs smooth stone slabs and unfortunately i think the area it's way too small for this to work so i think i'm gonna go back to my original plan and just do this as i originally planned it so it's going to be just like a regular path pretty much going from house to house to this and then to the barn and i think that's gonna be it i wish i would have done the raised path but i think i need a much much bigger area for that to look decent because i can't really you know bend the path too much because of the houses being too close so this is what i kind of have so far i did the path like with the smooth stone slabs and without and i think if i add the slabs after i actually finish the path itself it looks a bit better because i'm not gonna try to make something that looks unnatural maybe so i think what i need to do now is to actually build this barn over here so I can bring all paths together and kind of have a circle around this uh, centerpiece, like the fountain. And then I can potentially add these here. So I feel like they kind of work. Uh, one worry that I do have, unfortunately, is that the villagers are going to climb on them. I don't know if necessarily it's going to be a problem. I think in theory it should be okay. It's not like they can go somewhere too far to be totally honest so it might potentially be okay but i'm gonna have to go gather some more resources and build this barn the barn is gonna be a simple thing it's pretty much just going to be a rectangle with a roof on top of it it's even gonna be open in the front i believe i'm not gonna make anything like too fancy or anything it's just going to be storage so a rectangle with a roof a couple of barrels maybe some hay bales and that would be it and now the big reveal it's not so big like i said it's just a simple barn i think i added a good bit of storage here i like the way you know the chests mix with the barrels I added some kind of table here i wish i could do something underneath here maybe i'll be able to if i have that armor stand book I'll have to look into it. It could add a bit of life in here to kind of have something stored underneath. But this is pretty much how it looks like. Like the path looks actually pretty decent like this. 
Oh, we have a patrol here, so I'm gonna try to stay away from them. So we have the paths over here. I think the one thing that doesn't work really, I'm gonna have to replace this and kind of make it end over here. And I think I'm gonna add some type of greenery here. Maybe add some leaves, some bamboo, some sugarcane potentially to kind of spruce this up a bit and not have it look so bland. There's a lot of gray around here. So I think after having all the farmers set up in this place, the next village that I'm going to be building is probably a mason village. The masons have a lot of blocks that they could give me, so I could try to kind of push myself a bit and build with a bit more color and something else rather than just stone and wood. I really want to try to make something nicer than just this. This is, you know, for my kind of building style and my experience with building, I think it looks decent and I really like how, how it turned out actually. But I really want to push myself for this series and to try to make it look even nicer than it actually looks right now. So yeah, I'm going to work a bit on this. It's fairly late in the evening now, so I'm probably continue this on the next day. But I will definitely have to build that fence around this so these guys can't actually walk in. I, see, I think the golem actually took one of them out by the looks of it. But yeah, I'm going to have to build that bridge around. I'm probably going to have to connect that village to this one uh, with the path. And then once I have the fence all around, I can actually start transporting some villagers over here so they can actually take their professions. So I actually put a lot of composters in here. I want to see how many of them they're actually going to use. And then I can probably add a few inside the houses as well. Something that I just realized is that I think the barrels here might actually cause some trouble because of that. They will try to be fishermen instead of farmers if I do it this way. So I might even have to block them or destroy them and replace them after all of them are farmers. So I'm gonna have to figure that one out. And yeah, if you guys have any suggestions of what else I could do around the village to make it look nicer, like whether it's the houses or the path or adding something around here, please let me know down in the comments. Like, I would really like to hear what you guys think about what I'm building. And like I said, I want to improve and feedback is always appreciated for this. And let's check out the outside and voila. It's nothing fancy, but I think it adds value to the whole build here. I decided to make a custom tree here. It's probably one of my first ever custom trees, to be honest. I usually just bone mill a sapling and that is it. It's nothing too impressive, but it's better than just bone milling a sapling. Then I added some of these uh, crimson roots around here. They kind of add a bit of color, just a contrast in between the gray, the green and then just a bit of pop of red add in some azalea bushes some bamboo just to kind of create a bit of height added more lanterns on top of the fountain and then i also added a couple of lanterns in here just to kind of keep the area lit up and uh, the next part of the plan basically it's going to be to make the fence that's going to go around this whole place so the villagers can't get out and no mobs can actually get in. So the way I was thinking to make the fence, I want to do something repetitive, which is easy to replicate. So I will need, uh, I will need my crafting table actually for this. So I will need the mossy cobblestone walls which will go in between these like that then on top of each of the stone bricks i'm gonna have like this then i'm gonna have some spruce trap doors and that's it it's like easy has a bit of contrast there's like a mossy cobble there's a what do you call these smooth stone slabs and then the, the trapdoors, 
feel like they add a really nice addition to the village and it kind of blends with the palette of the village but it also adds something else to it so i think i'm gonna go finish up this whole fence all around this i think i'm gonna leave a bit of space behind the buildings so let's say the fence potentially would come in somewhere around here so i might have to do a bit of terraforming here for this fence to actually go in maybe clear that mound of dirt from there and then play with the terrain slightly just to kind of make this fence fit and we need to consider that from here i'm actually going to expand that way so i'm gonna have to make some kind of square here or something like that and then make the fence I'm gonna have to make an opening through the fence or something like that to to be able to go through the next villages right and it's finally complete so i finished the whole fence i left an exit over here to continue expanding in that way then i left another entrance over on this side so i can connect that village i already brought in two villagers over here to expand this one so i'm gonna get i don't know maybe like 10 farmers around here i think should be enough you know three houses for 10 people i think that's fairly decent then i added a few lanterns over here basically the whole area is now uh, mob proof there's no spawns that can happen inside Probably outside, I think the villagers will just panic and they will spawn a couple of iron golems, so it should be okay to fight those off. I blocked this area here with just with some stone. I don't want them to see these barrels as workstations, I want them to take the com composters first. And uh, that's pretty much it. Basically, I will have to actually make a hole into here and then connect this path over to the entrance and then make another one over on the other side for the exit but the village is pretty much complete i do want to figure out what else to put in these areas maybe make some kind of like small gardens or something or maybe plant some more wheat or a few more crops just so they can farm away but uh, yeah, if you have any other suggestions that I could do in these spots here, let me know down in the comments. I do want to fill them, they look really bland to just have them like that, so something definitely needs to be done there. I just need to figure out what. And yeah, that's pretty much this village complete now. So all I have to do is wait for these baby villagers to grow up. And then just get more of them, like I said, about 10. And then I'm finally going to be able to trade with the farmers and get all the emeralds that i need also i have just four rockets but i can show you i really really like how the village looks like from above it looks so good let's fly this way over here and then the second we turn i really really like how it looks like it kind of looks like a checkered pattern for that fence i guess flying it's not the best way so maybe i can land and then I can just go free cam. Yeah, I really like it. I think I'll need to take down these uh, spruce trees. They're kind of massive and they overshadow the whole build. But I'm really pleased with how the village turned out. So, like I said, the next one it's probably going to be the mason. I don't have any plans when I want to do it. This episode is getting slightly long now. So the one thing that I do want to do now is to connect the mountain with the main base. Well, main. I say main. The original base, let's say. The starter base. So I already drew up a line over there with how I want the path to look like. And... I think I'm gonna go with that. I'm just gonna do the same path that I did over here. Uh, probably gonna add some of those lampposts potentially. Or maybe just get the carpet trick done. I definitely want to get rid of these torches. They, they look really bad. But yeah, basically uh, I made this small bridge over here. That crosses the water here. It's like nothing fancy, just a tiny small bridge. 
then I just traced the path over here. So the next step would be just to add the moss on the sides, the bushes, the fences and all these other things to, to make it look the same as the other ones. And then here is just pretty much a straight line going straight to the wheat farm. So I feel like the world is definitely coming together. I think... I wonder if we're actually at a thousand days yet. Um, let's see, where are the days? Days played 627, so still a good bit actually. Until uh, we hit a thousand days. Maybe, you know what, a thousand days I'm gonna make a... A special like see what we achieved so far but uh, yeah I think this is gonna be the last piece of the project for this episode the episode is getting rather long right now and I think I'm gonna leave the the netherite farming for the next one so I might actually be doing this on stream I was thinking to do it like that like that you're gonna have like a live reaction of me panicking in the nether so if you don't follow me on twitch uh, I stream over there as well, but I also multi-stream over here on YouTube, so you can find me either or, whatever it's more convenient for you guys. And uh, yeah, let's get building that path so I can start actually editing this episode and get it out for you guys for Saturday. So first things first, I'm going to go and bone meal and expand the moss throughout the whole path. I think this is the easiest and fastest way to do it. And I'm going to remove pretty much like 90% of all the grass that spawns because of that. I'm going to have to get rid of this gravel. I don't like how it looks like here. But uh, this is pretty much the plan. So I'm just going to go like this. Break the grass. I'm going to have to put some torches underneath the carpet at one point to get rid of the torches that you can see around. And I'm going to do this all the way to the end. The next step would be to gather some more leaves. So I'm going to use both the uh, azalea leaves and some oak leaves as well. The azaleas are actually easier to gather because I just need to bone meal a bush and then that grows the tree for me. The oak ones I actually have to wait for the leaves to despawn slightly so it's a bit slower. But it's not too bad of a process. I really need to get a hoe that has silk touch on it. I go through shears really, really fast by doing this. Got all the leaves that I need, I hope. So now I'm just going to start placing them. So I'm going to do, you know, random ones here and there. Sometimes too tall, maybe like three next to each other. Sometimes I'll have to break a carpet to make it look a bit nicer and then I'm gonna have to like kind of mix them here and there just to kind of keep the contrast a bit nicer as well you can do something like that get rid of this carpet maybe put one like that probably gonna have to remove this doesn't look like it's kind of belongs there and we can do something like that so keep in mind that I'm going to come in and then I'm going to add the fences and the bamboo here. So I don't need to like completely fill everything with leaves. And also since leaves are transparent, you can kind of hide the flowering azalea behind them. So it kind of gives this, you know, color effect, but it's kind of subtle rather than so strong as this one. I feel like it adds a nice touch to the whole path whenever you walk by. And I definitely need to do like a, a walk by in between the starter base and all the way to the furthest village that we built today. Just do it by horse and see if my path plans actually work. Now it's time to add in all the slabs that are basically going to be our stairs. And also sprinkle some of those like fences that I was talking about. So I kind of want to mix spruce and oak together in this path i didn't do it in the previous ones so i want to see how it would look like on this one maybe it would create like a a better contrast see for example here i definitely need a few more leaves it's a bit too bare so do something like that and maybe potentially one in front of this 
And maybe I would need one of the flowering ones over here. Something like that. So I'm gonna have to come and like revisit the whole path again after it's done. It's not gonna be fully complete like straight off the bat. So once I kind of go through all the steps, I will come again, look if there's anything that you know, I could potentially change or something that I missed and make it look a bit better. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Like I really like I really, really like the way this type of path looks like. I know the path blocks are probably not the best and I'm actually thinking to change them to like packed mud further down the line or something. But in a way, I kind of want to keep these paths that I build really early game just to kind of keep the early game vibe and then just to see my skills pretty much progress through the series because if I'm gonna change everything I'm gonna lose this whole vibe here and this world keep in mind it's pretty much infinite right so I can build as much as I want without actually losing what I started with so it would be nice to go back to this world you know a year from now let's say and then come to this area over here see how it looks like and then compare it and see how my builds look like a year from now compared to today that would be a really really cool thing to see so hopefully you guys are gonna be sticking around for the ride and i definitely want to hit at least well i want to keep this series as a permanent series Pretty much like Etho, that's pretty much the inspiration that I got. And something that he told in one of his episodes recently is that people don't necessarily play Minecraft for the game anymore and they just kind of want to make videos and all that. And maybe that's why sometimes my progress doesn't seem like a lot. I do want to enjoy this whole world. I don't want to just, you know, play, make a video, play, make a video. I want to actually play in the world, link everything together, make it look nice, put my own spin into it and really enjoy Minecraft the way it's supposed to be played. So now the final step before the final revision is going to be the bamboo. So I'm gonna do pretty much what I did here with the river. I'm gonna get my bone meal and my string. And then I'm gonna bone meal this, get them between two and four tall, put the string on top to stop, stop them from growing. And that's gonna be the last touch for the path. So I'm gonna try to like hide them behind these bushes like this, for example. So like that you can't necessarily see the whole thing, but you can still kind of see it through the leaves. So it's going to add a really nice addition. And I think I'm going to have to add some type of color. And I was thinking to maybe add those roots. But I'm not 100% sure. I think it was like the crimson roots that I had at the village that we built. Could be something. Or maybe I can just add the blue flowers that I added in the other path. Gonna have to figure that one out, but that's not too much of a priority right now. And uh, we are finally done with this path. Almost. I still need to add a few more details. But uh, basically, we've been streaming for a couple hours, both on YouTube and on Twitch. So if you're not following me on Twitch, don't forget to follow. If you're not subscribed on YouTube, do so. You can find all the links down in the description. And I basically added a bit of color around here. So I added these uh, sweet berry bushes. I feel like the, the red really adds to it. Then I added these uh, pitcher plants. I don't know how I feel about that blue. It kind of looks nice, but I don't know yet. I do like this one though the torch flower i really like the way that color pops and i really really need to get a few more of these so i think the next project is going to be to get those sniffers well not to get the sniffers but to get some rails underneath the sniffers and add the hopper minecart so like that i don't lose any of the seeds 
because at the moment I need to remember to go there every like 10 minutes or whatever they dig and I definitely lose a lot of seeds when I'm not there and especially if I'm just around if I go you know stretch for like five minutes all of those will just despawn so I'm gonna have to do the rails underneath and then yeah the the path pretty much is like I, I said earlier so the only difference is that I added these berry bushes just to add that small bit of color I added a few more leaves around then I added the bamboo every once in a while and it looks really nice actually and I like how this looks like like as a kind of as a railing let's call it it adds a a nice addition and then here again some bamboo and all these kind of things so yeah that's uh, that's the path and now let's fly over to the village to show you what i did over there so first thing you'll notice is that i actually made a new path over here i actually forgot to add the block so i'll have to to add that in but i have time when i'm gonna expand the path so it's not too big of a deal but basically i added these paths over here then i wasn't sure what to do along the paths i can't really add any leaves like i wanted to because the villagers will just jump over so i decided to add some carrots and some wheat here and i feel like it kind of works and one cool thing that's gonna happen is that these farmers are actually going to farm these crops so I have at the moment around the village I have carrots, I have potatoes and I have wheat. So it's going to be interesting to see how these are going to change over time. The more they farm them and what are they going to replace them with, right? Because they're, ne they're not always going to place a, a potato where a potato was. So as you can see here, for example, there's like four potatoes in a row. So they definitely replanted this and did their own thing with it. And of course they trample a lot. So if you do want to see uh, everything that I had to deal with with the villagers, uh, you can just check the replay on YouTube. Basically there's a whole stream replay there. I leave them all so you guys can watch them kind of behind the scenes footage. And then I pretty much got a few extra villagers around. And I'm only going to accept villagers that have perfect trade. So... They need to have carrots, potatoes, pumpkins, and melons. So if they don't have all those four, uh, unfortunately, they will not be part of this village, if you know what I mean. So at the moment, I have four of them that all have these trades. I see there's a new baby around. I need to get a few more beds so they can uh, get a few more babies going. But uh, yeah, one of the villagers didn't actually meet the standards so he was uh let's call it relieved of his duties and uh yeah that's that's about it for this episode i think it's fairly long so i hope you guys stick around all the way to the end so as always if you guys enjoyed the episode don't forget to leave a like don't forget to leave a comment if you have any suggestions or anything like that you would want me to add to the world or if you don't have anything to say, just drop down your favorite emoji. Just drop a cat emoji, for example, because we have a lot of cats around the village. If you're not subscribed already, don't forget to do so, so you can catch all the new episodes and live streams that I'm going to be doing around on this channel. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye!